Okay, so、um, today we are having a really fun English class about making homemade food, and、uh, we're going to read an article about how one journalist learned how to make homemade mozzarella for the first time as an adult, and、um, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about how this could be like.、Um, A really nice thing to do in our own lives to kind of slow down and start making our own food at home instead of always buying prepared food. So Aka is with us today from Japan. Hi, Aka. Hello. <laughs> How are you? So yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. So I'll show you、um, this article that I found that I thought you would really like, and、uh, we can read it together and probably learn some new vocabulary. And、um, you can tell me if you have any questions about it too. Okay. So I'm looking for the button to share my screen. <laughs> I'm using a different browser today. I'm using Google Chrome, so hopefully everything will work smoothly. <laughs>、uh, can you see the story here on the screen? Yes. More. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you the link also on the chat in the chat box here.、Um, so, can you read the title maybe for me of the of the story? Okay, mozzarella is magic. How many father and I learned to separate curds and whey. Away. Curds and whey. Very good. Have you heard of curds and whey before? No, is it a type of the milk or something? Yeah, it's what happens to milk when you add rennet.、Um, it's、uh, something that you add to milk to make it turn into cheese. So all of the、uh, the solid part comes together, and those、uh, are the curds. Let's see. And then the watery part is the whey. Whey.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can you say this one more time? This is actually a, an Italian word. So you kind of say it like pizza.、Uh, those two Z's kind of have like a T sound. It's mozzarella, mozzarella.、Ah, mozzarella, the cheese. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a soft white cheese that you put on pizza, mozzarella,、yeah. and it melts、yeah. very well. Mozzarella magic. Okay, <laughs> so、um, this is a really nice story, and maybe we can start reading it right away.、Um, can oh, maybe I can ask you: Did you ever make cheese before at home? Oh, no, <laughs> I just buy the cheese. Yeah, yeah, that's what we usually do I, too. I've oh, sorry, go ahead. I made yogurt in my home. I I have、oh. a yogurt, but not not cheese. <laughs> cheese may be more complicated to make. I think.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, with yogurt. And with the yogurt maker, do you just use fresh milk, or do you have to add a little bit of yogurt to it? A little bit of yogurt, and yogurt maker keep the milk in a proper temperature, and one night, and then yogurt. I I got yogurt. Next, next. That's really、day. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like it better than the the yogurt that you buy at the store? Um. Yeah. Because sometimes I I can eat a、uh, a little bit hot yogurt. It's it's impossible if I buy yogurt from the store. Oh, hot yogurt. Okay. <laughs> But、uh, cool. kind of、uh, to keep the everything is clean is very difficult, you know, because if the different jam got into the yogurt and milk,、uh, maybe yogurt tend to be different. <laughs> different. Oh,、thing. okay. That's that's really interesting. I've made yogurt, but not with a yogurt maker. Um.、Mm -hmm. I made it with just milk and like a little bit of starter yogurt,、mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, with a lot of milk and a little bit of starter yogurt. <laughs> and you you heat up the milk in a pot, and then、um, after the milk cools off, then you add the starter yogurt, and then you leave it overnight covered、um, in the pot. And then in the morning, there it's all yogurt. It, like the whole thing is turned to yogurt. Oh, I see. Maybe、really、yogurt. Yogurt maker is not necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's really easy though to make if you have some yogurt to start with, like a little, 
a little cup of it, you can make a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. That's cool that you make yogurt at home. That's awesome. All right, so we can read together about um, how this journalist and her father um, decided to try to make mozzarella cheese at home. Um, so maybe I could ask you to read. Uh, you're the only student today, so you can read the whole thing. <laughs> but maybe we can just start with the first three paragraphs. Okay. My father and I have a cheese habit to feed this passion and maybe save us some cash and a cheese counter. We decided it was time we learned to make the stuff ourselves. Our first goal, mozzarella. On a below freezing January morning, we arrived at Flint Hill Farm in eastern Pennsylvania, ready, to, ready for a class course in cheese. The instructor and farm owner uh, Kathy Fields met us in the dairy shop. She took on this 26 acre farm in 1997 and a few years later began turning it into an educational center. Walking with the confidence of a woman who knows her way around a horse, Drumplow. Uh, she led us to the cheese kitchen, a small shed-like room built into one side of a barn, and presented us with a, lot, a pot of glistening yellow hued milk, fields, jersey cows, apple and honey, each produce, each produce four to five gallons per day. The milk is rich about one third cream and fields and her customers like it that way i couldn't uh, drink low-fat milk if i tried she said i'd get on it great reading okay and um they used a few different expressions that i thought you might have questions about um did you see some vocabulary that was new for you uh I know the gap, it's comedy, but I'd gag on it mean laugh at it. No, like a gag, yeah, that's right, is a word for like a joke, mm -hmm. but uh, it's also a verb that means like when you are, um, I don't know how to explain it, when like when something kind of gets stuck in your throat and you want to like spit it out. Like, for example, if you drink some bad juice, like some juice that is old, you would gag. You'd be like, ugh, and you would spit it out. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what, the, what she means when she said, I'd gag on it. Yeah. Um, and there was another expression here. A crash course. Have you heard this expression, a crash, crash course? Finish ready for a crash course in cheese. I think uh, in, in the process of the cheese, uh, maybe we need to crash the milk or something? Um, that's, cl that's a really good guess. <laughs> but um, a, a crash course, it's, it's kind of like um, a, a class where you have to learn everything mm -hmm. in one day. So it's not like a normal class where you learn everything little by little, but in one day you just have to learn everything about one subject. And even, I see, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, go ahead. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, I, I know that course, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so even here on YouTube, there's a channel called Crash Course. And so they make like short videos that explain in a very abbreviated way, um, like different things about maybe philosophy or history. And they, it's like a condensed version of, mm -hmm. of history. So you can kind of learn a little bit of everything in just five minutes or something. So they were taking a crash course in cheese. So they were going to learn very quickly how to do it. <laughs> and um, do you know what a plow is? Horse drum plow. Uh, who knows how way around a horse? No. Uh, this is something that they use in the garden. 
-hmm. And in farming, particularly, I'll show you some images here. Mm, oh, Examples of, of modern plows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I know. Okay, so have you have you ever seen a horse drawn plow? No, horse is rare actually. And not now nowadays, maybe cows used to use for farming here, and probably <laughs> nowadays, maybe horse is very rare. Maybe horse for horse riding as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Oh, okay. But not many, actually. Well, yeah, you can see some examples of people here who use uh, very large, powerful horses to um, to kind of break up the dirt so that it will be ready for farming, so they can plant plants. Yeah, so that's what a horse-drawn plow is. A horse-drawn means pulled by a horse. Have you seen a horse-drawn carriage before? No, uh, I just seen the horse, a carriage. You mean the the car? Yeah. yeah, I saw it in 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 Georgia. <laughs> Not oh, in Georgia. cool! Okay, in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised. Wow! I took the picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we saw some of these when we were visiting Italy this fall too. Maybe, um, and so before they had cars, they used these. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, maybe nowadays for such thing purpose or, or festival. Maybe I saw the festival. I think. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very old-fashioned thing, so it's, it's cool when you get to see them now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so they use that same expression, though. Yeah, like horse-drawn. Mm -hmm. So that both of those things, like the plow and the carriage, they're both um, pulled or drawn by the horse. I see. And Mustafa joined us again. Hi, Mustafa. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hey, welcome Hello. back. I'm really sad. <laughs> I'm sad because my Are you electricity. Having a problem? I have my uh -huh. the electricity went off and you know I have to wait. Oh, but, okay. Uh, yeah, I waited until it's back right now. Oh, okay, yeah. no problem. That happened to us too when we lived in the Dominican Republic. We had unreliable electricity. <laughs> yeah, but especially like today it's raining and when weather is raining, like it would be too much. Unreliable, not like the normal. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you. Well, we were just reading a little bit about making cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, welcome to class. Thank you so much. Hello, Kate. Yeah. Hello, hello Mustafa. <laughs> All right. So, um, maybe Mustafa, you can continue reading for us if you like. You can read the next three paragraphs where it says, at field's direction. Okay, okay, Michelle. Um, at Field's direction, I swept, I swept my hair under a, under a knit cap and we got to work on mozzarella. My father poured some critic acid into a double boiler and I mixed in one gallon of milk. We needed to increase the acidity for the mozzarella to stretch, to stretch well. Fields explain. Fields turned on the double boiler. Once the mixture reached about 88 uh, um, Fahrenheit, degree Fahrenheit, I added a mix of enzyme, enzymes known as rennet causes much of the protein in milk to join together and form cords mm -hmm. while the Curts, curts, mm -hmm. while the liquid is squeezed out as Y. Out, uh, squeezed out. Uh -huh. As Y. Um, mm -hmm. As Y. It's found naturally in the stomach lining of young ruminants, like leaves, gulls, or lamb. Calves? Calves? Mm -hmm. Calves or lambs. And is also. Uh -huh produced by some micro microbes and even planets like the Carodon system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and okay. you can read this last one too, okay? 
Okay, thank you. I excited, I excitedly mixed the mixed in the run it as if I were whisking custard custard of for for a which quiche quiche, but feels but feels stopped me short at four whirl around the pots. If you whisk too much, she warned, you will get something that looks like ricotta. Oh okay. man, this is, this is difficult, I know. You did a nice job, yeah, there's some very specific to cooking words here. <laughs> yeah, nice job with your reading. So I think you have probably a lot of questions about the vocabulary, but first I wanted to say welcome to Adriana. Hi, Adriana. Hello. Hi, Hello, welcome. Everybody. Good morning. Hello, oh, good morning. morning. <laughs> I think good it's good morning only for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though. It's okay. <laughs> I was yeah, trying to, to, to join the class uh, using the the youtube channel but i i couldn't oh okay sorry did you find but the now link? i'm here okay. yes I, I found it in facebook oh, okay okay <laughs> i'm happy you were able to get it yeah uh, i'm happy to be here too cool um so, so today we're reading about um, a journalist who started making mozzarella with her father um, they went to a farm to take a crash course or a very quick class to learn everything about making cheese. And Mustafa just read for us and we found a lot of new vocabulary in these three paragraphs. Uh, so Mustafa, um, maybe you can tell me which, um, which words were new for you or which ones do you have questions about? Oh, Mustafa, we can't hear you. I'm not sure if your microphone is muted. But um, maybe we can start with this word. I think this one would probably be new for you guys. Ruminants. Does anyone know what this means? I think I do. OK. Uh, it's about the, the animals, the way they, they, they feed themselves, the way they digest food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. So um, they have like different kind, different stomachs, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very good. So these are some examples of animals that would be considered ruminants, animals that digest their food like that. Um, and so um, does anyone know what a calf is? I don't know how. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's a baby cow. Very good. What about a lamb? Baby sheep. What's yeah, sheep? baby sheep. Baby. Yeah. Baby sheep. Yeah, very good. And it looked like Mustafa maybe lost his connection. Okay. He'll probably be back though. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, they get rennet, or they used to at least in the past, from the stomachs of calves or lambs. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of sad. But now they, um, they have technology to produce it with microbes or from different plant sources. So that rennet, um, maybe I could ask Aka, did you see what it does to the milk when you add the rennet? Cause much of protein in the milk. What? What? What is rennet that causes much of protein in the milk? One cut and liquid squeeze up. Well, maybe it's a jam for uh, making yogurt. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't make yogurt, but it says that it, it makes the protein in the milk join mm -hmm. together and form curds. Mm. Um, so it's, it's not like yogurt exactly. Um, but it's, um, instead of being like a yeast or, um, or like probiotics, you know, like acidophilus that you find in yogurt, 
it's an enzyme. So that's something that, that breaks down food in your stomach usually. So Adriana that's, asked if it was like a yeast. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, that's why I don't, uh, I don't uh, suffer the diarrhea after eating yogurt. But uh, I have not, well, uh, I if I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay, maybe you're lactose intolerant. Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, so that's um, one of the words, any rennet, anyway, <laughs> rennet. And this is always used in making cheese. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> and do you guys know what ricotta is? Yes, it's a kind of cheese. I think it's, it doesn't have a, a lot of food inside. Kind of a white cheese. It doesn't have a lot of, it's a white um, Italian cheese and it's like a soft cheese. Um, I see we had another student join us with a Chinese name, I think. Hello. Hi, I don't know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Welcome to class though. Here, let me see. I click on them. Oh, they said hello. <laughs> Hi, hello. Please. Welcome. Oh, Aka says it means pine tree. Is it Chinese or is it Japanese? Oh, Korean, cool, okay. Well, if you like, you can use your um, your microphone, but if you don't want to, it's okay. You can, you can just hang out with us. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining us. So he, these are some pictures of ricotta cheese, and in Italian, they pronounce it like ricotta. <laughs> ricotta. ricotta. Yeah. I think the same ricotta. way we pronounce here in Brazil, ricotta. Okay, cool, yeah. So this is usually um, used in ravioli and lasagna, a couple of famous Italian foods, so it's really good. But they, that's not what they wanted to make today. They wanted to make mozzarella, so they said, don't whisk it too much. <laughs> and do you guys remember what a whisk is from our cooking in English classes before? Ah, uh, whisk is maybe... W w uh, maybe whipping cream or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. right, right. Okay. Got it? Okay. It's, it's a verb like and it's blend. also a noun. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's like blending? Kind of, yeah. You use this tool and you mix it. Okay. This is The tool is called a whisk and then also the verb is called whisk. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a really nice one to remember. So she said, don't whisk it too much. And um, do you guys also know what a quiche is? Yes, it's another delicious dish. Maybe you can describe it for, um, Aka, have you heard of it before? No, <laughs> what is it? Okay, maybe you can describe it, Adriana. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of uh, a cake, but it's a... Uh, salt cake with uh, a lot of cheese oh. and uh, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, that's a good description. Very good. And instead of saying salt, you can use the word savory. Savory. Savory is um, like instead of saying, I know in, in Portuguese and even Spanish and Italian, they always say like salado or, um, you know, like dolce or dulce. But in, in English, we don't say like salty and sweet, we say savory or sweet. Oh, okay, savory. Yeah, so we always use that word savory for so, foods that are not sweet. <laughs> savory dish, delicious, delicious savory dish. Yeah, great job. And if you say something is salty, People will understand that it has too much salt and you don't like oh, it. No. Yeah. It's not like that. <laughs> so that's, that's Aka, a don't um, worry. It's not remember. salty, it's savory. Uh, I see. <laughs> yeah. It's not too salty. <laughs> yes. 
All right, excellent job, guys. And there's another tool, another kitchen tool called the double boiler. Has anyone heard of this? Never. No. Okay, have you, Akka? Did you ever hear of it? No, double boiler. All right, let's see. It's, it's something that you use to um, heat up something on the stove without directly. So, an example here, this first pot, or even this third one, and you can see like the you put some water in the bottom pot, and then you put whatever you would like to heat, like very gently, in the top pot. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like chocolate might burn if you heat it directly on the stove. Mm -hmm. So you have to use a double boiler, and then the steam from the bottom pot will heat up the top part. Mm -hmm. I see. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that one's called a double boiler. This, yeah, it's like two pots together. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mustafa joined us again. Welcome back, Mustafa. Hello, 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 welcome. <laughs> hello again, Mustafa. Again. Hello again, uh, Adriana, as far as I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I don't know, do you guys remember what curds and whey are? Why is there uh, something uh, on the surface of your goat or cheese? Uh, yes, that's true. Uh huh. Cars, I don't, I forgot the cars. Maybe I'll show you guys a picture. Um, there is a famous um, poem in English for children. And um, it's a, it's Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> but anyway, you guys can maybe like read that later. But you can see here how the milk is separated here into curds, these solid pieces, and whey, which is the liquid. Mm -hmm. So you usually throw away the liquid, usually. But some people use it for other things. Mm -hmm. Keep the curds to make cheese. Mm -hmm. Or butter. So, um, so they they discuss curds and whey. They mention it a lot. So I was just making sure you guys remember: curds are the solid part, and whey is just the liquid. All right. Okay. Do you guys have questions? Uh, when you talk about whey, uh, well, I I use it like a pounder whey. Sometimes I I buy it to to eat pounder whey um pounder i don't oh yes, powder I, uh, yes powder? i buy i buy whey to use mm -hmm. uh to cook uh, in in some recipes or to use it alone with mm -hmm. water and uh to get fit i buy cool. whey whey protein mm -hmm. whey protein Okay. Yes, powdered. Sorry, <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Powdered. powdered. Wait. Powdered. 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 Wait. Yeah, right, right, right. Very good. That <laughs> last you. time was perfect. Yeah, I know that one's <laughs> hard to pronounce. Yes, powdered. Wait. Did you know that it comes from milk? Yes, I knew, but I didn't know that was the 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 liquid part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you could even call it a byproduct of cheese okay. manufacturing. A byproduct is something that is left over uh, when you try to make something else. Mm, okay. The byproduct, yeah. So it, that's nice. A lot of um, companies, instead of throwing it away, they uh, make it into a powder and they sell it for protein for people too. <laughs> uh, yes, so Adriana, maybe not cheap. Oh, it's not yeah. cheap to buy, <laughs> even though it's a byproduct. Yeah. It costs a lot. Well, companies, yeah, they try to make money any way that they can. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, so Adriana, I think it's your turn to read, so I'm going to ask you to read next. Um, and you can start here where it says fields, and uh, we can continue um, on the bottom of the picture. <laughs> okay. Fields told us to watch for the curds to sink and shrink. Within four minutes, I understood what she meant. There, 
at the bottom of the pot was a solid white mass, curds, and above, above it a wa watery liquid, whey. I cut the curds into two inch squares and we raised the, the temp temperature further. We watched in amazement as the squares sh shrunk more. Nice, good job. And um, can you make the TH sound like, <laughs> like, like thought? I thought. Thought, okay. So use that TH sound here in further. Further. Yeah, further, very good. Nice job. I, sometimes the TH sound is hard. All right, so they saw the, the curds and whey separating, so maybe I'm going to ask you to continue reading until where it says astounding. Okay. My father and I took turns microwaving the curd squares in batches small enough to fit into our hands. After 90 seconds, we took out the warm, gooey, mass and squeezed and stretched it to drain more whey. Then we microwaved again and repeated it until we had a warm soft ball of cheese that was stretchy but not rubbery. The entire process took under 30 minutes. I know there's nothing magical about mo mozzarella when acidity and the proper enzymes meet milk at the high temperature curds are bound to form and yet actually watching cheese tape shape was astounding nice very good and um sometimes i know like in, in portuguese the r sounds kind of like a h sound um, but here it kind of has like a really strong R sound, like right. Right. Good. <laughs> Very nice. Great job. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys, did you have questions about the vocabulary? Like anyone, Mustafa or Aka or Adriana? Patches. I have, I have two actually. Okay. Yeah. First, the first one, yeah, exactly, Adriana. This one, gooey. I don't know what that's to mean. Gooey, that's a great word. Gooey. All right, let's look at some pictures of gooey things. Gooey describes the texture of something. So you can look at um, bowls of some gooey things. Can you see maybe this example here? The slime, this is very gooey slime. Oh. Oh, okay. These are gooey cookies. So it's it's like something that is um, this or oh. this texture. <laughs> okay. So it could be something maybe that's um, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I guess <laughs> bad, kids a like slime. Way? A disgusting way or not? I mean, it depends on the context, but like usually if you're talking about brownies or a dessert and you say it's gooey that means it's like soft and uh, delicious it's mm -hmm. gooey okay. but like if if you bite into something that's not supposed to be soft <laughs> you would be like ew it's really gooey <laughs> soft and sticky yeah okay so it could be um positive or negative depending on how you use it depending on the context can I can I can I can I refer to a person as a gooey person? <laughs> or no, unless they're covered in slime. Oh, okay. <laughs> like so, we cannot use it as a media or something like that. Like if you see this person's hand, you would say, "Oh, your hand is all gooey." But like usually, people can the can the person be a gooey? Me. Can can the person be a gooey one? I mean, or not? Uh, I mean, I mean, if they're I, covered, if they look like this, then you could say it's yeah. a gooey person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but like batches? a normal batches. Let's see. Batches. A batch of something means to um, like a like a batch of cookies, for example, would be like when you're making cookies, all of the cookies that come out of the work that you did is a batch. 
Oh, okay. Um, but it says a quantity. Like it's quantity like a small group. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Microwaving occurs in batches. Hmm. How about teaching but, our the? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just surprised that they microwave the cheese. We don't even have a microwave. Like I don't ever use a microwave because I don't really? like them. <laughs> I don't have. I don't like them. You do or you don't? No, I don't. Oh, I don't like them. Yeah, I feel like I get cancer when I look at them. <laughs> oh, why? Yes. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I have heard something like bad about them. I mean, negative, not bad. Negative about them, maybe about the negative using of microwave because you know it's not. I think I think it's not healthy to do your food, to make your food that way, to heat them mm -hmm. that way. So yeah. there's some some news about them, I know. Um, there is some talk about uh, using the microwave, but we use it, by the way, I don't know. Like when sometimes you need something urgently, so we have to go to the microwave and then do it <laughs> in, in one minute, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you have other questions about the vocabulary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I was I was wondering about mozzarella. Is it like a uh, food type of food? Yeah, it's a kind of cheese. Um, kind of cheese. I'll show you here. It's like yeah, a, sure. a soft okay. white cheese that they use on pizza. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Mozzarella, okay. and sometimes it comes um, like shredded in a bag. Um, I'll see if there's another picture. Here you can see them stretching the mozzarella. Okay. But it's from Italy. It's like a fresh cheese. Oh, so it, is so it, it salty? Is uh, it salty? No, it's it's not too salty, no. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it, it exists here in Iraq, so we, I need to test it if I found it, maybe. Do you recommend okay. it? Or is it just for pizza? Um, it is. Oh, sorry for some kind of. I guess. Food. No, it's okay. I'm going to show you a picture of different kinds of mozzarella. Um, it's good. It doesn't have like a strong flavor though. It's mm -hmm. not very salty like hard cheeses are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Akka wrote something in the chat box. What did? What is it, Akka? Hey, pizza. Oh, is it pizza? A slice of pizza. <laughs> slice of pizza, <Cool>. yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. I have to eat lunch after the class. I'm really hungry. But yeah, they use it to make this salad. It's good. Uh, slimy or, uh, you know, picky than other cheese. The mozzarella is. It depends. Like, this is. This is the classic mozzarella that in America they call it fresh milk mozzarella. But oh. uh, this is like in Italy, this is the only kind of mozzarella that there is. But in America, they have like also a very um, manufactured kind. It kind of looks like this. So it's it's not it's not really fresh, and you can use it to sh like to shred it to put it on pizza. But this is what the the real one looks like. <laughs> Iraq, Mustafa, maybe they would have the American version of mozzarella, which looks like this, but probably <laughs> not know. the. I don't, I don't really know. know. I don't really know about in, in, in Iraq. <laughs> you can find. Okay. You can find surprising you. I don't know. I might find it. I know. Yeah, Do you like maybe. Pizza, Mustafa. Hmm? Do you like pizza? I love Domino's pizza, exactly, specifically. Domino's pizza. <laughs> Yeah. If Enzo was here, um, he would be like, that's not pizza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? Why? It's not pizza. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> because it's like American pizza. I'll show you some a difference between American pizza So, so Enzo versus don't like, Italian. So Enzo does, doesn't like uh, <laughs> Domino's pizza or? Like he eats everything. He's, he's not too picky. But you can see like... Um, I know these pictures are making me hungry. Like this is like a, an Italian pizza. So they're all small, like they're kind of like a personal size pizza. Okay. Each one normally. Um, this these are all like Italian pizza. I don't, but you can kind of see how it's different from maybe this is. Mm. I guess I like Chicago another type of pizza, pizza which is Mediterranean one. This is another one. Vegetarian? Uh, no, 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 okay. Mediterranean, Mediterranean. 
Oh, Med Mediterranean? Yeah, exactly. Mediterranean? Yeah. You can say it here. And you can kind of see it. This is a picture of American pizza. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it's not as good as Italian pizza. Yeah. Maybe American pizza has two types. This uh, thick type, thin, I mean thin type or part type, deep part type. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of different types of crust that they offer. Um, but traditional Italian pizza, it, it almost always looks like this. Oh, I see. Um, unless they have something called a schiacciata or like focaccia. But anyway, we're, we're getting off. So as a, uh, so as a pair, I'll show you focaccia. I'm sorry, as a person who, who I think ate both of them, or who has uh -huh. ate both of them, eaten both of them, uh -huh. which one in your opinion is the best? <laughs> Honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like the Italian pizza is a lot more natural because um, like Domino's pizza and most of the American pizzas have, um, they're like, all of the ingredients are like pre, like manufactured, I don't know. So they come like, I don't know, it's, it's not as natural. I got For example, like maybe their dough, it's, it's like all made ahead of time and it's all shipped to like everywhere in mm. like that sells Domino's pizza and then all of their sauce it's all the same and all of the cheese is all maybe the you same. had enough of them teacher maybe you have enough of them you know like i mean sometimes when you have I when you have, good, yeah, 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 so yeah i still like it but it's not like it doesn't taste like homemade food it tastes like um, manufactured yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. but um but you can see they have like some, something called focaccia in italy and sometimes they put like tomatoes and different things on it and so instead of making pizza, they'll make like a thick one like that. So if you like the thick crust too, you can have focaccia, which is also really delicious. But anyway, we kind of got off the topic of cheese. <laughs> but pizza, it's so good. Um, all right, did you guys have questions about the other vocabulary? The last I'll go back word is oh, astounding. 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 That's a great, uh, a really, really nice vocabulary word. Um, Ako or Mustafa, would you like to give us the definition for astounding? Honestly, I just, I just saw the word and I don't know the meaning of it. So. Oh, okay, okay. Ako, can you give us the definition? Amazing or something. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're astounded, you're kind of surprised. And um, you're like, like surprised. Astonish. I have here to astonish. Something astonish. What is something astonish? Astonished um, is yeah. close to. Yeah. Astonish what? Yeah. Or close to what? Mm -hmm. Astonished is a little bit more surprised than astounded. <laughs> oh, okay. But both of them, they're, they're like synonyms, like you can see here. But um, but some other synonyms could be like amazing, surprising, breathtaking, stunning, impressive. Something that is astounding. Striking. This is a good one. Striking. <laughs> yeah, striking. That's another good one. So um, so this journalist was like, whoa, to actually see like that the cheese came together just from milk, and she saw it happen like before her eyes in half an hour, in just 30 minutes. So um, like a really nice impression after she made. <laughs> um, Aka, maybe I can ask you to continue reading for us if you would like to continue with the next three paragraphs. Okay. I later called Paul Kindstedt, Kint a food chemist at the University of Vermont and author of Cheese Culture, a history of cheese and its place in Western civilization. To find out exactly why the cars formed so quickly after I added Renet. Uh, Kindstedt explained that the, that a molecule called a casein makes up about 80% of the protein in milk. Casein pro proteins lump uh, together about one 
one ten thousand at a time into balls called micellus. The linnet attacks these little protein balls, forcing them to link together into an increasingly dense fishnet matrix. The rest of cheese making from then uh, on is to create opportunity for that finish, uh, fish net to squeeze out more of the water trapped in the net, he explained. Nice reading, very good. And um, there was this word, um, micelles, and this is actually a new word for me too. So we can maybe search for the definition. But um, they were saying that it, they're the balls that by the protein once the rennet is added to the milk. So, oh, it's a pretty complicated definition. <laughs> <laughs> um, Akko, would you like to read the definition? Okay, an um, aggregate of molecules in a colloidal solution such as those formed by detergents. Sounds like detergents. Mm -hmm. An aggregate, yeah, this one is aggregates, so it's like a, a group of something. And colloidal. Colloidal. Is, is like a scientific word. <laughs> <laughs> In a colloidal solution. Like they have something called colloidal silver, which is um, like water that has, what? Is that something homogeneous. Uh, Yes, I'm not um, sure. Um, having the properties of homogeneous, I don't know. I don't know, it's, as you said, it's, uh, it's a scientific word. It's a scientific word, yeah. And I wanted you guys to hear the definition, I mean, the pronunciation. <laughs> I, I, I'm also, I, uh, pardon me, can you show us also the an image? Maybe there's an image that can make the picture more clear for us, if you want. Yeah, yeah, good idea. <clears throat> So an aggregate of something is kind of like a group of something. And so you can see how different molecules in these pictures have gathered together. And mm. uh, I guess they said that it works like in detergents too. Mm. And they the molecules group together. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's a picture. <laughs> and and uh, how can we pronounce it? To the pronunciation here. I thought it would work with the speakers. Hold on. My cell. Oh, my cell. My cell. My cell. My cell. Michelle. Like yeah. Michelle. <laughs> okay, my cell. Michelle. <laughs> No, but it's my, like the, the I has, is pronounced like with a long I sound, my cell. Awesome. Yeah, okay. interesting. <laughs> so that's how uh, the rennet makes the, all of these um, protein molecules um, lump together or get into big groups mm -hmm. um, to make those, those protein balls, these micelles, and then they kind of all group together all of the micelles also group together to make um, a matrix or um, kind of like a sheet of paper. You can kind of imagine it like that, but like it's it's made up of like all of these different um, micelles kind of linked together. Water molecules also link together when they freeze mm. to to make like a strong hard um, to make strong hard ice. Mm -hmm. So these proteins from the milk also do that to make cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why um, cheese. Go ahead. What? Uh, that's why cheese is not a water. Yeah, it, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. That's how it turns from a liquid into a solid. And you know what? Why, like you touched something. Into, I'm mm -hmm. sorry for the interruption, by the way. Um, no, it's okay. Um, you know, like we used to do uh, some kind of cheese like in our home as well. And I remember, I still remember like my father, I think, yeah, my family. Um, 
they were try they were like doing it from the milk and from all of these like by by product you can say of the like natural milk and they make it i don't know how they are doing it how they were doing it but we were like they were mixing and they were heating it i think boiling it and then they were using some kind of uh, i don't know matrix something like that you know in order to 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 cover it like in and in one piece uh, collect it together in one piece oh, and then cool. make and leave it uh maybe for us for maybe i know i don't know six hours something like that in order to be solid and then i don't know there are i, I remember that we were using it you using some kind of byproduct of milk in order to make cheese so yeah that's yeah. really cool that's awesome and what did the cheese turn out very salty yeah. or was it like mm. fresh like mozzarella I ha I haven't had mozzarella, but uh, I, I it wasn't like kind of salty. It was good actually. Um, yeah, but it was it was very good. Yeah, it was very good. Ah, okay, I remembered it. I still remember it. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, all right. Did you guys have questions about any of the other vocabulary? No. So far, so good. Okay, all right, so Mustafa, I'm gonna ask you to read next. Maybe you can read the next three paragraphs for us. Okay, teacher, thank you. If you keep, uh, if you keep chilling, if you keep chilling and kind of movement, any kind of movement of that milk while these net-like structures are forming will, uh, are forming, will cause them to break, to break apart and you will end up with flex particles and not the cords, the cords, cords. He explained, you end up with a mess in the in other world, in other words. I also learned from kind, uh, kind, kind said it, kind said mm -hmm. it? Okay, from kind said it, that by making mozzarella, my father and I were practicing a culinary, 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 mm -hmm. culinary, culinary, yeah. culinary, culinary art that may well, that may well reach back to Antiquity. Mozzarella is one mm -hmm. form of pasta filenta, filata, fil, filata, filata, mm -hmm. filata. Pasta a, filata. Pasta filata. A group of stretchy mm -hmm. cheeses that likely or that likely originated in the Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. Mediterranean, the process, Mediterranean, Mediterranean <laughs> the process yeah. of making pasta filenta resembles their hand cheese described in written record from the first century after decade. AD. Yeah, AD. you just say AD. Mm -hmm. uh, century AD. Fields also fields also taught us to make cheddar, which required a bit more patience. Thanks to a live pictorial culture and a lower cooking cooking temperature. It takes over two whole hours for the curds, curds to form any sh any any uh, to form and sh shrink. Then there is another two days in press and a week or more to form a rind, a rind or a rind. A rind. A rind. Yeah, they use the same word rind for the outside of an orange. The the peel they call it a rind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I I have realized I have realized that I have a problem with the pronouncing the U teacher. Okay, and like in culture? Uh, culture curds. This is curd. Curds, yeah, see? I curd I, culture. Curds. Curds. Okay. Curd. Mm -hmm. It's kind of pronounced like this, like like K E R D curd. Curds. Okay. Yeah. But culture, even though they both have the U there, the, the culture is, the, the U sounds a little bit different. It's like, uh, but the curd is like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> curd. Okay, and Adriana asked about flex. So a flex of something is like a small piece of something. For example, Adriana, if you have your mascara on your eyelashes and um, like it starts to come off during the day, you might get like little pieces that come off. And so it, those would be like flecks of mascara. Okay. 
So they're like tiny it. pieces of something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did you guys? How about how about flake? A flake. flake is also a small piece of something, but a lot of times mm -hmm. now it's associated with cereal, like corn flakes, for example. How about saying flake out? I flaked out. Oh, that's a um, an idiomatic expression that means that you weren't um, responsible. Okay. No, I, I maybe I uh, I didn't commit to my word and did something else, something like that. Yeah, usually like like you said that you would do something and then you decided you didn't want to do it, <laughs> so you flaked out. Okay, I want to flake out about the Arabic language class. Oh, I'm going to flake out. <laughs> no, no. All right. Do you guys know what antiquity means? Peace. I don't know. Antiquity. Something. Antiquity past times. Yeah, right. Do you remember the word antique? Yes. Sorry. Very, very old, right? Mm -hmm. So antiquity very, very is usually talking about like very old times in history. <laughs> so this is talking about like the first century mm -hmm. um, CE or AD. Okay. All right. And you guys know culinary? Related to cooking, I think. Yeah, exactly. Great job. Very good. So um, well, then we have like the conclusion here to the story, the last three little paragraphs. So maybe we can read this, um, this conclusion. And Mustafa read last. I think maybe it's back to Adriana. Is it your turn? Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> I, so can I don't the conclusion for us, though. Okay. We left the farm that day with a pint full of mozzarella, some general wedges of cheddar prepared earlier, and the confidence to make both cheeses ourselves. Fields warned that cheese making doesn't always go so smoothly. Cheese is this living creature, she said. Some days, some days it works, other days you can do the same thing, and the cheese says, not today. My father is I'm going sorry. to take his chances. He's planning a dinner party featuring his homemade mozzarella. He wait until his guests arrive and then make cheese right in front of their eyes. A good party trick that is likely a couple of millennia old great job yeah and this one is pronounced like pint pint a pint of mozzarella mm -hmm. pint do you know what a pint mozzarella. is no um it's a like a liquid measurement um like a liter a pint um yeah it's like smaller than a gallon okay i think it's also smaller than a liter <laughs> a pint, yeah. And do you know the word millennia? Millennia, it's about the people who are who have less than 30 years, maybe. Oh, I think you're thinking of millennial. Yes. So that expression millennial does apply to people who are um, like young people, maybe. But um, the millennia or a millennium is 1,000 years. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, so a couple of millennia would be like 2,000 years, maybe, a couple of millennia old. But um, millennials, <laughs> that word that you're using, um, maybe they were born around um, the turn of the century. So when, when it turned to 2,000, after the year 2,000. So that's yes. why they're called millennials. Yeah. Millennials. Did you have questions about the other words, you guys? Wedges. Wedges. Um, a wedge is like a triangle shape of something. Um, they also use this to describe a kind of shoe. <laughs> but sometimes Ooh. these, yeah. Like, for example, these kinds of shoes are called wedges. <laughs> so they don't have, they're like high heels, but they, yeah, 
they're called wedges. But a wedge of cheese is like um, shape of cheese. Here's wedges, like potato wedges. I like oh, okay. um, a triangle shape, like this simple machine picture here. Yeah. Okay. So that's a wedge. So um, uh, ask Aka, how did um, making cheese from scratch, what kind of effect did it have on this journalist and her father? Uh, I, don't know about that. Uh, I think it's, you know, the cheese is alive. So every, every cheese could be different because of the something. Something maybe temperature mm -hmm. wing type of miracle or a moisture or that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it is the answer or not, but well <laughs> no, well <laughs> like um like do you guys think maybe that from this experience of this journalist and her father, do you think that it's worth it to take the time to learn how to do things um like how to make things at home? when we could buy them from the store? Yes, because uh, sometimes it's a different, you know, fresh, fresh, uh, you know, product and non-fresh product could be different. Mm -hmm. So it could taste um, better, maybe? Yes, because, for example, um, uh, my father uh, planted a tomato in a garden and mm -hmm. I could eat uh, not only tomato, cucumber, or a lot of fresh vegetables. I realized it tastes different from supermarket vegetables. Yeah, that's true. They do really taste different when they when you grow them from home. Right. Um, like you also kind of feel like this journalist. She felt like really satisfied. She felt like some kind of like satisfaction from doing it herself. And um, and she said, like, wow, it was astounding to see how the cheese forms right before your eyes. And um, do you think that, that that experience of, like, making the food yourself or knowing how to do it, do you think it's worth it? Yeah, actually, when I made a yogurt, yeah, next morning I felt satisfaction. Oh, fresh, new, fresh yogurt <laughs> was made by me. Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah, quite satisfaction or yeah. You made the yogurt yourself? Yes, uh, by using yogurt maker. Mm. Yeah, I remember also my mother was, or my mother, yeah, she was using it. She was, she, uh, she was, uh, <laughs> or she was, she used to make uh, yogurt. And also I remember, or, or not I remember, we're still doing it actually. We're still doing pickles, teacher. Pickles? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> so we could buy it from the store, by the way, and uh, sometimes we do. But mm -hmm. my father and my mother sometimes they are doing it. They are doing uh, pickles in home. That's so cool. These are made pickles. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And you, you like you said that they yeah. were doing cheese also before too. So like, yes. how does how is it different for you? Like when you when your family or like when you are able to actually help and you see. Like it come from like these raw ingredients, just like from milk or from the vegetables, and it turns into this amazing thing. Or just when you buy it from the store. Um, like, um, obviously it has different tastes. By the way, <laughs> both of them are different. Sometimes I prefer to buy, for example, about the cheese. I prefer to buy the cheese, like some kind of you know, of cheese. It's very hard to make, like in your home. And I would mm -hmm. rather buy it from the store. About the yogurt, it would be very good. Like I think it is, you know, instead of uh, uh, it is, it would be econo economical teacher. I mean, yeah. instead of buying, yeah, instead of buying uh, from the store, you can do it in your home, and it would be very economical for you, especially yeah, that's if true. you don't want to spend a lot of money. I mean, yeah. About the how, what's what was else because. Pickles? Pickles? Yeah. No, pickles. It's good. It's good. Pickles. Sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes I like it. So it depends on the way they are doing it. You mm. know, sometimes the, the experience is bad. Right? They experience some difficulties at times, you know, and and they they know how to fix it. Um, mm. Yeah. 
yeah sometimes we tell them our feedback <laughs> in order to fix it the next time <laughs> so yeah that's cool nice okay so you would say like it is worth it to make some things at home it's worth it for, for sure like it's worth it yeah I think it's also fun to like make it yourself too. Yeah, try and to it's, do it's it. It's so satisfying. Try yeah. to do it. <laughs> and I will tell Enzo. I will tell him if it's good or not. Yeah, he makes like um, pizza from home. He's uh, learning how to make like the dough just from, you know, flour and water. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. We also like do pizza. This is like some kind of like something normal. We do pizza at home, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, yeah. I think it's good. It's, uh, it's normal, right? Making pizza. Every home, I think, can make pizza, right? Every house. No, maybe. not everyone knows how to make it from scratch. No. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh -oh. Yeah. A lot of people just buy, like, the dough and make it, or they buy, like, a pizza that's already made, and then they just put it in the oven. <laughs> Oh, I wish but you were here, like, I, I wish we were here, guys. I will invite you for a pizza of my mom. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Your mom can make us pizza. <laughs> okay. Okay, I wanted to ask Adriana, too, like, what are some of the foods that you guys make from scratch at your home? I like to preparing cheese, but I don't know how to do that. But I prepare cheese, uh, vegetarian cheese using oh. cashew nuts or using uh, some roots like potato, cassava. I don't know if you use this word cassava or yuca. Yeah, it's called cassava. Oh, is cassava different from yuca? Yes, but they are alike. They are almost the same thing. Yeah. And I, I really, really love the, the, the cheese made from cassava. It's a little gooey and it's mm -hmm. delicious delicious and without i never try that it's amazing mm -hmm. really it's wonderful and easy to do you have to give me the recipe uh, yes <laughs> it's easy it's, you only need to to cook for about 10 minutes and then wow. to smash or to to blend and mm -hmm. put the seasonings and uh, you choose the seasoned garlic, maybe onion, and mm -hmm. it's delicious. You can put it on on the top of a pizza or a lasagna. I love because I love eating cheese, all kinds of cheese. But sometimes I try to to I'm try to cut back on uh, lactose, but. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm preparing this kind of vegetarian cheese and I think it pays off because they are delicious, easy to to make and mm. they are not so expensive. Yeah, that's really cool. Well maybe you can share the recipe with me later. <laughs> I'll okay. give you my email address. But um that's that's really nice. And cheese, like I love cheese too, but it has a lot of saturated fat which can contribute to like maybe heart problems or liver problems also. So having an alternative like that would be really cool. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So you think it's worth it to make things from home instead of just buying them? Absolutely. It's better and uh, you, you are sure what you are eating. When mm. you buy something, you don't know what exactly you are eating. Uh, for example, yeah. the, the ch cheddar cheese, mm. I heard, I watched the television talking. If the more expensive ones, they are really cheese, but the majority of them are not cheese. They are a kind of, uh, they made from Plastic. wheat flour or uh, maize flour. They are not wow. really cheese. <laughs> yes. Really? And yes. Wow. So I'm afraid. That's crazy. So, and sometimes the, the taste when you buy it, they are different from one to another. So you're not sure yeah. what you are eating. That's true. That's true. So that's one huge reason why it's better to cook from home. You know that it's safe. You know that there are no chemicals, no preservatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And there's no like fake cheese. <laughs> yes, fake cheese. 
All right, guys. Well, you did, you all did really, really well. And I wanted to make sure you all know the expression made from scratch. Made Has from anyone... the beginning. Made from, from the, I don't know, from the first step, from zero, OK? Yeah, from zero. OK, OK. So can you give me an example of something that you guys make from scratch? I started learning English from scratch. OK, good. <laughs> yeah, nice example. Anta, can you use it in a sentence, too, to make something from scratch? I, I was thinking about English learning, but uh, another example of... Uh, well, stop us, uh, your example. I, I not made, I mastered uh, how to swim from the scratch. Makes can it? you say it again? I mastered how to swim from the scratch. Oh, okay. To... I have. I must learn how to swim from scratch? Yes. Yeah, I okay. He, he already mastered. He already mastered, so he shouldn't do it like this. So oh, mastered. Yeah, right? Mastered. Yeah, he said mastered. Mast okay, yeah, how's that? Like, ah, ah, mastered. Ah, mastered. Yeah, yeah, okay, nice. Very good. So you started from scratch, and now you're like a swimming master. I hope so. That's cool. <laughs> you should teach me because I don't know how to swim. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to give... Uh, Mustafa's on swimming lessons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adriana, can you tell us um, a sentence using made from scratch? Or something that you did from scratch? Uh, I do tomato sauce from scratch. I okay. go and buy a tomato. And uh, actually now I'm trying to, to grow tomatoes at home. And then I, I clean the tomato. And I I do it from scratch. I cook. Yeah, that's like the best tomato sauce too, and you make it from yes. scratch. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she, she reminded me also, teacher, to, to one more thing that we used to do. This is also the tomato sauce. We also used to ah. do it. Yeah. That's yes, awesome. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be making some tomato sauce from scratch now because we're having pasta for lunch. So I have to go so we can wow. have some lunch. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for coming to the class. It was really nice to see all of you. Thanks so much, Michelle, okay. for your time. Thank you so much. Thank when, you. Uh, when are you gonna, are you gonna hold our next lesson? On Monday? Um, uh, Italian class? Italian class? Well, I think Monday actually we're gonna have an Arabic class. With yeah. Arabic. He's gonna Arabic, Arabic class. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Salam alaikum, Mustafa. She, she, she already speaking Arabic. <laughs> yeah. But um, I didn't change it on the schedule yet. Sorry. So I think that that's Monday. But um, yes. is would it be okay with you guys if we also did English on Monday? I mean, it would be okay for me if English was all the day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Okay, yeah. especially for Aka though, because I know it's really late for you. Maybe early hour is preferable, but uh, I'm, not I'm not sure there, Mr. Fritz Kiju. You said what is Monday. preferable? Uh, early hours. Early hours. Earlier, earlier, okay. Earlier. Early hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, maybe. I'll get back to you guys. Maybe instead of Fridays, we might be doing them on Wednesday. I was thinking about doing them Monday also, but okay. um, but it would be in the evening, so that would be kind of hard for our students in Japan. But maybe Wednesday. I don't know if that's okay with you guys. But we'll okay. okay. Yeah, as soon as soon it is more in the evening, it would be okay for me. As soon as it is in the evening, you know? Like because in the morning I'd be in the, I'd be I'd be I would be on the work, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Any any day, I mean. If it was like day, day, day. Okay. Okay, well we'll see. Um we'll we'll all coordinate I, to make the class work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But guys make sure to attend my next Arabic, Arabic language class. Arabic class. <laughs> Especially Enzo teacher. Tell him to come. <laughs> Yeah, he got home from work, so he's like studying right now, but I'll tell him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks for coming, guys. I'll see you Thank on you. Monday. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye, guys. bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.